So in the last tutorial, we talked about text nodes and how to procedurally animate this shit to give us X and Y coordinates of a sphere or whatever. Uh, but in that tutorial, I made a massive, massive mistake and I claimed that there was no switch node. In fact, roll back the tape. I'd like a string switch node so I can have two of these and then switch in between them. I'm sure there's a, a kind of clever way to do it with uh, substrings and whatever. I mean, there is, you join them and then you do some substring stuff. I'd like to not do that for now. Yeah, so that's embarrassing. It turns out there is a switch node. I wanna talk about that because that's how you literally animate between two strings. But also I found out that I'm gonna make my own uh, switch node that not only works, but does it better. Cause it, you know, in the traditional switch node, there's no transition. It's just kind of like one or the other. Uh, and the one I'm gonna show you how to make, there's actually a couple frame transition you can do in there. So let me show you uh, what I'm talking about. So I want you to imagine that you have two strings. One of them says another long line and the other one says sentence one. Uh, you can see I added two keyframes in this uh, switcher node, which you can see goes from one to the other. Um, but uh, this makes a nice transition between the two instead of just having like an on or off thing. So this is what I'm going to show you how to make. Uh, let's get to it. I guess we may as well start with the new geometry nodes thing, although this is going to be a quick one. So again, make sure you have the newest version. You got to have text nodes for this. I, I, I can't stress it enough. So in geometry nodes, I'm just going to take this cube, make it its own geometry nodes thing and get rid of the input since we just want text. And since we already did the last tutorial, no need to remake the wheel here. We already know how to do this. So we know there's a string to curves node, which is gonna let us put a custom string in and it's gonna output it as a curve that we can see. So if I write something like butthole or something like that, you can see it's actually showing up and let's uh, center our butthole as it was in uh, medieval times. So we could put in whatever string we want. Well, how do we have two of them and switch it, right? So that, that was the original issue. Well, the thing is if I have like two strings, like let's say the first one is yes, and I wanna keyframe this, I can't like hit I and keyframe, you can see it's not working. Uh, so what we need to do is we have two strings and then the way we switch between these, I thought there was like no way to do this, uh, but apparently in utilities, there's a switch node, which I'm like, okay, almost works, but not really. We get these red inputs and it's for geometry. No, there's a drop down, dude. <laughs> I don't know how I didn't see it, uh, but it turns out we can swap between like any two things. So I'm gonna swap between two strings. So I have uh, these two inputs going to the output. And when I switch this, um, you know, it's gonna do that. And we can put some math to say when this condition hits, uh, but long story short, there is no nice transition between the two of these. So let's uh, fix that. Um, in other words, we need to make a switch node somehow uh, using only like joining and substrings and all this. And it turns out it's possible. Uh, for this, let's pick some long longer uh, lines just so. Uh, it doesn't have just a three letter word and a two letter word. So one of them could be butthole and the other one could be no thank you. As if there's an offer for butthole and you're like, eh, it is a Thursday. No thank you. Okay, so we want to switch between these. Well, here's the, the method I found out. And you might think, again, how are we going to switch only using joins and substrings, whatever. First thing I'm going to do is if we need to switch between these, we need to have a string that has all the information, both this one and this one. So I'm gonna join these together, which as we know, just puts one after another, um, order dependent, right? So if I put it like this, it would be the other way around. Um, doesn't really matter too much which uh, order we pick, uh, but we have them now all on a single string. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna use the substring command. And what this is gonna let us do is it's gonna take the input string and only give us a section of it back, a substring, a, a subset of it and we can pick the length. So you can see as we increase this, we get put, butthole and then part of that no thank you. So the length tells us, you know, how much of it to display and the position is kind of like the offset. So we can have a certain length of it, but kind of have it scrolling. And it turns out that these two numbers are actually enough um, to give us, you know, everything we need because, and for the length here, let's use a length node because if at any point we wanna change these strings, I don't wanna say, oh, I counted eight letters and I just put it in here manually. I just wanted to calculate on the fly, so I'm just gonna use two length nodes. But you're gonna notice, um, if we want to display the butthole line, we need we just need to make sure it has the length of, the length of the butthole string. Boop, and you can see butthole shows up, as long as this is position zero. If it's anything else, it's gonna scroll, right? Um, on the other hand, if you think about it, if we wanna show the other uh, string, we need to have the length of the other one, but the position needs to be offset by the first word, right? Because we want to show the length, but just get rid of the first word. In other, in other words, <laughs> um, we have two kind of inputs here. Uh, this input gives us the second string, 
and just using the length of the first one with position zero gives us the first one. In other words, we can kind of animate between these values and it's going to give us a transition, not just a on or off switch. So for the position, we're either going to have the um, zero or the length of the butthole string. Um, so in other words, we can just literally mix these two values together. So we're either going to have length as one input or zero. So that's black as the other. Put that in the position. And then for the length, we'd just be switching between these two, depending on what word we want. So I'm just going to take this, plug in the first length, and we might need to swap some if I have them backwards. But uh, put in both lengths, connect them here. And what you're going to see is I might have them inverted. There we go. Um, what you're going to see is when both of these are set to zero, we tend to get the second string. And when it's set to one, we get the first string. Because again, um, in one case, we have the position zero with the length of the string we want. And in the other case, we have the offset of the first string with the length of the other. You just got to think about it since we concatenated these with the uh, join. Um, but this means, this means now if we uh, use a value node and connect it here, we have control. When it's zero, it's this. When it's one, it's the other. So it's basically like the switch node with a transition in between. And if this plays quickly, it will look good. So let's uh, take advantage of this. I'm just going to clean up this node network, shift, right click, drag with a node wrangler to do what I'm doing. I'm just going to take all these nodes, these like string nodes and the mixing, and I'm going to control G to make them a node group. And now we have a custom uh, switcher group where we have like a nice slider between these. And we could pick whatever strings we want here. Um, although it does seem to actually uh, want us to use actual string blocks and I'm trying to undo and for some reason it's not working. Uh, so I'm just going to Again, if we have something simple like yes or no, the, the nice thing about this is it's not dependent on um, what strings these are because, again, we use custom length nodes and all this. So I'm going to say, yes, I do want pi. No, get away from me. So these are very different strings of different lengths, whatever. <clears throat> But now we can transition between the two of them. Now, what you might be thinking is it just kind of looks like a scrolling animation, and it does, and that's, I mean, we know why that happens. But if you play this quick enough, and you'd only want it to be showing up for a couple frames, it does look kind of more random. So on frame 20, we can keyframe, have it be here, and then like five frames later, we have it be the other one. Keyframe, and now you can see we get a nice transition if you want it to be more kind of random or look random effectively. We can bring these closer and it looks like it's like transitioning a bit. It doesn't just look like it's on or off. Again, if we were to put these keyframes one apart from each other, it will literally just be the switch node, uh, but with a bit more control. So let's try another sentence or another phrase like well, one could be pencil and another one could be Amsterdam. Hopefully I spelled that right. Put those a couple frames apart, frame 20 and frame 25, let's say. And also the frame rate matters. How fast is this going to play? But you can see that looks like much more interesting, in my opinion. And then at this point, you do the same kind of business. You do the curve fill to make it actually, you know, show up. You can change the font or you could change like the centering might look interesting. So you can see it almost like extends from this uh, origin, it looks like. Um, but yeah, I, ju I just wanted to point out there is a switch node. I was wrong, uh, but also we can make a custom one that looks a bit better. And uh, for the people on the Patreon, of course, I'm going to clean this up and just make it a custom node group that you can import and you just download the blend. But either way, uh, that's it for this tutorial. How long did we go for? Eight minutes, whatever. I might have been a bit long. Either way, uh, thank you for watching. At this point, I usually do this whole like Patreon list thing, but I don't want to make this tutorial super long. So uh, that being said, thank you, patrons. Uh, you're going to get the blend file. You watch this tutorial early. And for people who want to join Patreon, there's a bunch of benefits. Check it out. Link in the description. But either way, text nodes, another one of those tutorials, I guess.